Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Magarelli from uh, CNY Fertility Colorado. Welcome, welcome. Uh, there's another Tuesday in search of the stork. Today, we're going to be doing lots of questions. Hello, Lara and Benny. Welcome, welcome. Chloe's baby journey. Hello. Good to see you. Tanjarika. Nice to see you. Naturally artistic. Hello, Maria. Ah, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Looks like my voice is a little gone here. Let me get some water. Been talking every day. Uh, hello, IVF man. Welcome. What's next? Hello, Lindsay. Good to see you. Lindsay on our side here. Hallie Cavanaugh. Great after. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. I'm feeling well. Thank you for asking. Kind to Osborne. Good to see you. Francellarisa. Nice to see you. 35 pineapples and going. That's a... a Oregon Mama, nice to see you all. Um, today is a beautiful day here in Colorado. The temperature is, oh gosh, in the 70s. It's kind of hard to believe we're headed, we're supposed to be in winter. Um, B Noble Jack, hello, great to see you. Hey, 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 do you want to do my egg retrieval in 16 days? I would love to do your egg retrieval, Lindsay. Um, I should be here, so just ask for me, even if Dr. Fink is on. Just say you'd like me to jump on and do your egg retrieval. I'd love to do that. Um, I One bad queen, welcome. See, now, um, today is mostly question and answers. Um, the, I oh, <laughs> Pueblo is beautiful too. Yes, I agree. Um, so really, let's let's start with questions. Let me, let me see if anything is, well, we're getting ready for the holidays. I want to remind everybody, if you're going to do PGTA testing, please have that prepared in advance in this, in this, um, in this uh, December at CNY generally, we can't add on PGTA at the last minute. So if you guys want to do genetic testing, you have to have all the consents, you have to have all the permits, all that stuff done. And uh, you have to do that ahead of time. You can't walk in at the, and say, oh, we just decided. So Please spread that out to all your users groups because we don't want to disappoint you, but add on PGT for the month of December is probably not going to work at any of the facilities, any of the CNY facilities, mainly because it, it adds another, you know, another five hours per case and we have to be prepared. After the holidays, you know, we can do that. Okay, Cindy has a question. <clears throat> I'm, have, I'm about to have my fibroids removed and tubes open. How long afterwards can I do an IVF cycle? Four to six weeks for healing, and then I would recommend it the month after. How to prepare and how long before IVF for men to get better sperm count and morphology? Thank you, Fadi. That's a great question. It takes men 70 to 90 days to rejuvenate their sperm. That's the amazing thing about with men is that because their sperm is made every single day, every single heartbeat, actually, men make a, a thousand sperm per heartbeat. <clears throat> They can rejuvenate their sperm. So by quitting smoking, alcohol, drugs, um, you can actually ch change DNA fragmentation over a 90-day day, uh, period. So guys, um, I've, I've said this before, um, a healthy body is a fertile body. So men, your health matters. 50%, uh, I believe 50% of, inf of uh, what well, we know, 50% of infertility is the male. But as we think now 50% of, of miscarriages in the female is because the male smokes. So please avoid that. And if you are going to change your lifestyle, 70 to 90 days. Uh, do fibroids cause failed implantation? Absolutely. And miscarriage? Yes. Even if the fibroids are really small. Well, if the fibroids are inside the cavity, <clears throat> that's where the problem lies because it acts like an IUD. It knocks off the pregnancy and can cause a miscarriage or prevent getting pregnant. So if it's submucosa on the inside of the uterus, you want you want to fix that. If it's subserosal on the outside of the uterus, don't do the surgery unless you have to for pain. If it's in between the muscle, most times you can leave it alone. Just did my sixth embryo transfer today. Finally found out I have endometriosis. Did a, did a Lupron cycle. Is this what you would recommend? Yes. Um, I would recommend down-regulating with Oralissa, um, uh, uh, an aromatase inhibitor like Letrozole for three months, 
uh, do the surgery, make sure you take care of the surgery uh, for the endometriosis. Do you, do I, Lydia, do I think it's worth it to prime? Well, it depends, of course, how old you are. The idea behind priming, how can I explain this? That terminology about priming, there's two types. There's estrogen priming and then there's growth hormone priming. With estrogen priming, estrogen causes what's called neovascularization, new blood vessel formation. With growth hormone priming, it, 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 it upregulates cellular processes, so like it's growth factors. So yeah, there are situations, especially postmenopausal women or perimenopausal women over 40, where they really don't have a lot of estrogen, a lot of juice, basically because of the normal aging process. So by priming with estrogen, you get better blood flow to the cortex of the ovary, thereby improving access of the medications to the area where the eggs are. So that kind of priming is very good. Growth hormone priming, you could do it inexpensively in a sense with serovital by increasing your own growth hormone, or you could do it um, with actual growth hormone. Now there, again, it's in that situation where there's low ovarian reserve. If you're in your 20s, this priming is not really for you. Um, my biggest fry bird is 31 millimeters, maybe. Uh, size of my uterus is 45, so, something I'm getting removed due to pain. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what the question is. Um, Lydia Marie, do you think it's worth 32 years old with PCOS? No, 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 don't prime. You don't need to prime, Lydia. No. At 32, PCOS? No, I don't think so. Low dose naltrexone, of course, if you know, there's a theory that it, it can, or this idea that it may lower inflammation. So that's really up to you. Tanjarika, my consultation's on the 13th and my cycle starts after that. Can I do my first IVF cycle in January? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, let me tell you the schedule. Uh, when you have your first consult with us, that, uh, getting kisses, thank you for the kisses. Um, when you get your cons, when you get your first appointment, that starts the, the, the time clock. In the next two to three weeks after your first appointment, you need to talk with financial. They'll call you. Then after that, you need to contact Global Travel. And then you have to get your testing done. That's a month. And then if all the testing is done and everything is good to go, then possibly the month after that. That's pretty much the standard in the industry. Hey, Michaela, I have to uh, hope to have you get... Again, for my transfer early December, hopefully we'll get transfer date on Friday. Well, I don't know if the day of the week, but I'll be happy to help. Just tell them you want me to transfer. Chloe's baby, are nabothian cysts near the cervix an issue? Not really. No, not at all. Don't worry about nabothian cysts. Nabothian cysts are just nothing to worry about. Um, Erica, what if I'm doing both serovital before bed and three units of vomit? Is that too much? No, Erica. Perfect. No, the serial vital is not going to be too much. Um, oh my God, Courtney, congratulations. You got your baby girl two weeks ago. Congratulations. I will tell my staff. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, I'm 45. Should I still do IVF? My eggs are a good number for my age. Yes, of course. Um, why not? Why not use your eggs? Uh, one egg, one embryo, one baby. Um, what about people with PCOS? Do you think serovital helps? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, well, how do I know that? I, I, I know that as people, uh, oh, you're 25. Well, at 25, probably you don't really need growth hormone at that point at the levels and your AMH is, yeah, you don't necessarily need to take serovital if usually it's, it's more for, um, situations where like me, you're getting older, but in situations where as you get older, your growth hormone goes down to 25, you're at the peak of your fertility, go for it. Cat, um, Isla Ninja. I had one egg retrieval so far, six made it to blast. Wow, I have to skip a cycle because the PGT lab is closed. Please don't worry about that, cat. Don't worry about it. We can re-biopsy, it's, it's, you're okay. Uh, Naomi, transferring two Morula compact stage embryos on day five, hoping for success. I hope for success for you. Uh, the journey, I'm getting kisses, orange kisses. I like that. Um, and the way Paige goes, hello. Uh, Nikki Barrel, hello. Uh, Angela, Angelica Felice, is it possible at 41 with 
uh, HGH priming to get euploids. Of course it is. AMH of nine, that's fantastic in terms of numbers of eggs. It's all about you're supposed to make a baby, right? You're supposed to make a baby. So having it's eggs, sperm, uterus, baby, we just help you. Is there any information on using on men using HGH? Well, it works for everyone. I use Ciro Vital. I mean, I'm, I'm over a certain age. <laughs> and so, yes. But in terms of fertility in men, no. Um, is it okay to take baths during stimulation? Absolutely. No harm there. What vitamins should I take to get ready for an FET? Well, uh, Janine Lives 888. What I would detected at the front door. What I would what I would recommend is that you um, uh, uh, download our family building guide, and there's a list of all the different medications that are available uh, that you can. Um, I'm sorry, vitamins that you can use um, uh, or recommend it. Now, again, the idea about supplements is that supplements' goal is not to substitute for good food. Honestly, it's not to substitute for good food. You want you definitely want to you know you want to you want to have the right amount of, of nutrients. Now we do stress a low carb approach to eating, honestly, because we um, we feel like inflammation caused by extra carbs is a problem. In your opinion, how do you know whether to do a fresh or frozen transfer? You're trying. We're trying to decide. Cindy, tell me how old you are, Cindy. If you're less than 35, you know. Well, no, fresh or frozen. Sorry. There, in our minds now, and there's more data to support, getting the embryos in the uterus is where they belong. Now, if you have ovarian hyperstimulation, polycystic ovarian syndrome, excess estradiol, then you really want to do a frozen embryo transfer. If none of those things are applying, then do a fresh. Lindsay, the keto diet. Uh, da, 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 I don't know what that was. Okay. Um, Heather, I'm starting Omnitrope and LDN. Hello, Heather. Uh, Thursday for priming. How early can I order my stimulation meds? You know, I don't know the schedule. Uh, talk to the global travel. Um, what is my thought on Omnitrope for 60 days prior to, to IVF cycle for egg quality? Uh, I, I heard it's not good to stay on it last four weeks. I think that's not correct. Whoever told you it's, it's not good to stay on a growth hormone. Um, it's expensive. I can tell you that it's not necessarily proven to be more effective. Uh, what is the wait time for a new transfer after a C-section? Well, you breastfeed for 18 months right after that. Cindy, I'm 33 with an AMH of 0.7 in my family history of early menopause. Ooh, gosh, Cindy, I lost the question. Sorry. Uh, ask me the question again. Um, Sarah Lee, 40 years of age, stage four endo. What would you suggest I do to prepare for an IVF? Acupuncture, zero vital, low carb eating, take your nutrients, avoid alcohol, tobacco, drugs of any sort. Um, yes, thank you, Chloe. Yes, you could too. There's no real studies for length of time on growth hormone. For example, young pediatric patients who don't have growth hormone are on growth hormone their whole lives. So there's not like a time clock. It's like being at a time clock for estrogen. Um, it's just the application of the growth hormone for fertility. That's what you're talking about. So Cindy, I'm 33 with name, age, points in a family history of early menopause. Oh yeah, uh, it was in response. Oh, um, uh, fresh transfer, Cindy, fresh transfer. So because she's got a very low AMH, early menopause, a fresh transfer is, is, is better for her. She's not gonna hyperstimulate. And so that's what I would recommend. Now, Nicole, I'm um, 37. I'm sorry, I'm 37 with low AMH. What can I do to produce better egg quality? Avoid alcohol, tobacco, drugs. Start via zero vital. Do um, growth hormone uh, and also acupuncture. Um, what do you think about the study on 95% pregnancy rates with you? Does that apply for endo patients? Yes. So this this is a this was a study that I'm familiar with. What it was was they looked at is how many how many embryos basically you ploy. I see how how do I phrase this? Um, do the number of you ploid embryos that a person makes impact through IVF impact their outcomes? And what is that number? Well, we used to say that if you had two or more you ploid embryos, you'd have a sixty percent chance of a successful pregnancy. 
This study suggested that if you have three or more euploid embryos, it's as high as 95% of those folks will achieve a pregnancy. I think it's close to that. So again, the thing you'll hear me always say is please store your embryos before you do surgery. That's the key. Store your embryos before you do surgery. Uh, Why? Because the uterus never ages. Uh, It just doesn't. Um, whereas, well, not never, but relatively speaking, but the ovaries do. You lose about uh, 1,000 eggs every month prior to age 35, and after that, you lose uh, 10,000 eggs a month. So the word euploid is, is a terminology which means you means normal, healthy, normal chromosomes. And euploid means without euploid, in other words, without normal embryo uh, uh, chromosomes. So when someone talks and does PGT or genetic testing on embryos, what they're really looking for is, are they, do they have all 23 pairs of chromosome and are they in balance, you know? And um, so that's what you want is euploid and uh, you don't want aneuploid. Can uh, growth hormone cause joint pain? Is that normal? You know, not that I know of, but if it is a side effect, you should be able to look it up. How long should you be on serovital before a retrieval, Heather? Well, the idea, Heather, is to be on serovital at least two to three months for men and women, both, because that's the cycle. Egg cycle takes about 70 to 90 days. Sperm cycle takes about 70 to 90 days. Isn't that interesting? Because they're both gametes. Uh, is a commonly reported side effect, but I have been out 90 days. No, so- Okay, so uh, this is Chloe's baby's journey. She said... Um, um, Aches are a common side effect, but she's been on it for 90 days with no side effects. Kara, I'm on, oh boy, too fast. Uh, Dan Dan Aguilar, I'm 39 years young. Good. An AMH of 0.15, is that worth going through IVF? Of course. If you want to use your eggs, of course. Hey, doctor, is it possible to be seen with you if my eggs are in Albany? Well, I'm in Colorado, guys. I and Dr. Dr. Fink are in Colorado. Um, you can have your embryo shipped to us, of course, and we'd be happy to put them in. Okay, my husband is testing at 17 with 90% mobility. Is that a good number for IVF? Uh, testing at 17 million, maybe? Yes, that's more than enough. Thoughts on, on, on what could be on if not ovulating with maximum dose, com- or what's be going on, Nicole? Uh, of letrozole and clomid. In other words, you're clomid resistant or letrozole resistant. Um, I would recommend, Nicole, you start looking at injectable medications. Heather, does gonalef help increase the amount of eggs? Never. You can never increase the amount of eggs. Your eggs are programmed from your mom's X chromosome. You have a program on how fast you lose them. You can accelerate that how fast you lose them with alcohol, tobacco, drugs, etc. cetera. Um, with certain diseases, but no, all gonalef or any of the fertility medicines do is they improve the accessibility of the eggs that you have there. What is better, clomid or letrozole? Well, most folks would say letrozole today because it um, has fewer side effects. It clears the body within 24 hours versus six weeks for clomid. It doesn't have the visual disturbances um, that are associated like Clomid does. So I would say letrozole is better. N. Mahans. I have done three egg retrievals and I always end up with one egg, which ends up in to degenerate. I have stage four endo. Is there anything that can help me? Well, I don't know how old you are, N. Mahanas, um, but certainly serovital growth hormone. Thanks for the kisses, <laughs> serendipity design. Um, um, serovital growth hormone, acupuncture, avoiding alcohol, tobacco, drugs, the keto approach or low carb, etc. What's the reason for two failed IVF cycles? We're both 27 years of age. It's transferring three grade A embryos each because, well, again, you know, you all know this. If you don't know it is the grading is just not something that is very uh, predictive. So I don't use it. Uh, you could have a grade A and an absolutely abnormal embryo. You could have a grade C and absolutely normal embryo. So that's the first thing is you might do that. Second is the endometrium is as critical for implantation as the egg so, or the embryo. So you might want to do an endometrial receptivity assay because maybe the timing is off for the transfer. 
So that's something you could do. Michaela, when would you recommend a modified natural FET versus fully medicated? I only recommend fully medicated. Well, I, I guess I shouldn't say that. If for some crazy reason you're not getting pregnant and you've ruled out every reason for the fully medicated FET, you might want to charge try a, a, a modified natural. Does the letrozole just help eggs grow evenly? Yes, yes. What causes AMH to be falsely falsely low? Nothing that I know of. Oh my God, serendipity! I'll see you tomorrow. Um, cool. I <laughs> love the kisses. Thank you. Would it be the karyotype blood test help? I'm not sure what the question is. I apologize. Um, what is your estrogen priming protocol? I don't have a specific estrogen priming protocol. What we have is a, uh, a CNY estrogen priming protocol, which is, um, uh, it does vary, uh, you know, based on the patient's response. There's not like one protocol. It's just providing estrogen plus progesterone. That's it. Uh, that's my estrogen priming and, and that's it. Um, Sarah Bam Bam Tribble, I'll be in Colorado Friday for my egg retrieval, but I hear you'll be on vacation. Well, I wish it was vacation. It's more of a working, oh, that's right, that's right. I'm gone Thursday and Friday. I apologize. Whoever I said I'd be here Friday, I apologize. I forgot. I have a business trip that I'm leaving Thursday, be back Friday. Um, sorry about that. My lining was April. Uh, my lining was 15 at baseline for a frozen embryo transfer. I started Provera on cycle day eight, never induced a withdrawal bleed. My cycles are always 28 days. I started very light spotting on the 26th, and today is the 29th, very light spotting. What is the next step? Call the uh, nurses. Um, this is, no, tell them this is your period. That's it. Not a full flow. This is all you're getting this time. So say, Dr. Magarelli said, count this as my day one. I don't do any cost analyses um, on Nanya. Um, that's the purpose of this is more medical, not financial, but you can certainly call our financial team for the price of embryo adoption. Uh, Heather, how early can I receive meds to shed some of my thick endometrial lining? It was measured thick. How early? Well, as soon as they found it, I guess. I'm not, I'm not quite sure of the question. Sperm analysis came back with 8.5% normal morphology. Is that bad? Well, it's relatively um, abnormal, uh, although depending on the World Health Organization's testing, uh, some say that it has to be above 15% for fertility to be standard. Others say with strict morphology, it has to be above 4%. So you're in the middle there. I would suspect that there is something that you are, that the sperm is contributing to infertility in that case. Do I recommend proxy for men with low sperm and bad morphology? There's no downside to using products like that. It's just a vitamin. It's basically a vitamin. So good nutrition and a vitamin, that's what I would recommend. What do you look for when you biopsy during a hysteroscopy? It's called endometri uh, endometritis not endometriosis, endometritis. And that's basically an inflammation, silent but deadly, ma'am. Um, it, it, um, it's not good for implantation. So I, did, I haven't done a lot of these. Um, I've been hesitant, but now I'm more concerned about subtle things that are causing people not to continue to be pregnant. Um, so that's kind of the thought there. Nefertiti, uh, does estrogen priming help follicles grow more evenly? No. Um, okay, time for a sip. <clears throat> I know I've missed some questions, but anyway, I hope you're all doing well out there getting ready for Christmas, and I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. I sure did. And um, gosh, we're growing. Uh, the Sarasota office is just, they're fleshing out the labs there, which is fantastic. I know they're working on the Philadelphia office. Michaela, I think I've asked this before, but favorite places to, to uh, eat in or near Colorado Springs? My favorite 
is the Cowboy Star for steaks and Colorado food. Shout out to the Cowboy Star, Chris especially. As for Chris, he's a great waiter. Um, the famous uh, Steakhouse, again, you'll see it, Steakhouses um, is pretty good. Uh, Prime 25 is, yeah, it used to be great. It's pretty good. Um, that's that kind of food. Um, what other kind of food? Uh, oh, gosh, I eat a lot of steaks, I guess. Good, you know, there's, there's a lot of good, well, no, that's about it for now. My brain's shut off. Um, recommendation for improving sperm morphology with great counter motility. Avoid alcohol, Jody, avoid alcohol, tobacco, drugs. Uh, take your vitamins. You could do acupuncture. It's been shown to help with morphology. Any plans for a, an office in Texas? Yes, Rosin, but it's not going to be for a few years. Um, a German, um, uh, Uvi's, Uvi's uh, is the best. UVI restaurant, Erica. Um, any plans for an office on the West Coast? Yes, there is, actually. Um, I'm, uh, but again, not for a little bit around. Blue Plan Pizza apparently is a fave from Melissa at Supernova. Um, hi, do you re recommend NADH? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, not because I just don't know that much about it. Any plans for a full service location in Atlanta? Yes, actually. Again, in the process. Um, I'm always told by Dr. Kills, be patient. I'm hard to be patient. Are there ways to prevent ovarian hyperstimulation? Ovarian hyperstimulation is caused by an over-exuberant response of the, the ovaries to the, um, to the medication. I got a kiss there. I saw it in a corner of my eye. And, um, and uh, the way to prevent it is, of course, with medications, lower doses, but also um, high protein, 200 grams a day, uh, uh, electrolytes like Gatorade, but without the sugar and acupuncture. These three things are tremendous to treat the OHSS. Um, but really lowering the medications is to prevent it. Uh, anyone asking me the timing for opening or closing of, of clinics anywhere in the country, I can't give you any answers on that. Sumaya, what protocols do you recommend for someone with autoimmune disease? Well, Immune Protocol 3, likely. If you go to the Family Building Guide on our website and download it, you'll see we have Immune Level 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, there you go. Nefertiti we, uh, is answering for you. Yes, we have immune protocols, and it depends on how many miscarriages you've had. Fadi, do you recommend doing karyotype blood tests for the male after two failed IVF with three embryos transferred each time? No, I don't. Not sure what that's about. Um, what would determine the trigger with a 5,000 versus 10,000 HCG? Just uh, honestly, sir, Siri, there's no difference. Um, now, the 10,000 will put you at a slightly higher risk of uh, OH. Prevent OHSS is Lupron triggers, not HCG triggers, Lupron triggers. Oh, my God. So, uh, Tiff, why don't you just get a, a consult? I'm sorry your IVF failed. Yeah, it's just too complicated to answer in a, in a minute. Um, does pomegranate affect egg retrieval or egg quality? You have no idea, Rosin. I have no idea. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a hard question. Are you more likely to have an ectopic ha pregnancy after having one? Absolutely, Melissa. Yeah. Of, of another ectopic in those who've had one ectopic because typically it means that there's tubal damage from something and uh, that's really why you tend to have a higher chance um yeah well we have some good news today we're adding another three nurses four three one two three four nurses i guess we're adding four nurses to our group here in colorado another ma I think uh, we're, we're looking now for another embryologist. So um, anyone who knows a nurse who likes the fertility field or an embryologist who wants to live in Colorado or even a doctor, we, we could always use another doctor. Um, Naomi Perry, yes, that's the stage before blast. Naomi, I must have missed the question. 
Carrie, I've been on letrozone or Lissa for 60 days. Do I have to wait for my period to start a baseline for my stims? You probably won't get a period. Um, yes, or uh, yes, you don't need a period to start an IVF cycle. Uh, yay, your nurses are amazing. You know they are. It's I give them a hard time sometimes, and you know I it could be a, a slave driver, just in my personality, but they're amazing. So love my nurses. Um, have you ever seen Clomid for men improve counting motility? Motility, yes. Um, yes, Clomid can help males by the same mechanism as giving FSH to males. It enhances the body's follicle stimulating hormone. In men, it's gamete stimulating hormone or sperm. So that's the mechanism. Can you do a saline sonogram, the same cycle as a retrieval, but not a transfer? Yeah. I probably yes, uh, but you can't do a trans. I wouldn't do a transfer that cycle. OBGYN doctor recommended removal of block tubes, risk of ectopic. What do you think? Well, I like clamping them rather than removing them. That's just my opinion, but either one. Um, Crystal, my local OBGYN did my HST today, and it was so painful. Tubes are blocked, which we figured. So ready for cycle day one around the. And get on with this process. Crystal, I'm sorry it hurt. But, yep, you're doing the right thing. Jaja Magaramap. How do you do IVF without a period? Well, the period has nothing. The, you're confusing the period with, um, which is a natural cycle, with um, uh, IVF, which is nothing is natural in an IVF cycle. Uh, so what you're essentially doing is you're, you're as long as you're going to do a fresh transfer, the lining is thin, you're always recruiting eggs, two waves of, of, of egg recruitment. So sometimes you just don't have a period, but you can still go forward. Um, do I stay at a hotel of traveling from Rhode Island to do a full course of, of a five-day blastocyst? Not sure what you're asking, but I would talk to Global Travel. Fadi, do you recommend doing IUI again, even though we did two IUIs and two IVFs all fail? Um, no, I would recommend a little bit more depth in why it's not working. Jessica, do I stay in a hotel? Oh, no, I did that already. Nicole, second transfer, natural transfer. Don't know what that is. Just failed yesterday after first transfer was chemical. Modified natural. Oh, I see what you mean. Should I try modified natural again since it was closer to sticking? Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with the modified or unmodified. Um, yeah, it, the sticking part of it has a lot to do with other things than just whether it's a modified natural or natural cycle. And I, and I don't see a lot of, I don't even understand this natural business. It doesn't make sense to me. Is there a, a technique for IVF to prevent ectopic? No, but I wish there were. I wish there were. <clears throat> so if you have hypothyroidism and it's under control with medication, does it negatively affect IVF outcomes? It should not. Let's make a baby. Uh, Agnes, I am one month, four days pregnant. Add my ultrasound today and my blood work HCG was 30,000, but I started bleeding. What can I do? Well, uh, fluids, 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 rest, acupuncture. Um, that's what I would do. Sometimes just the ultrasound can, can irritate the cervix and you can have some spotting. Would you recommend IVF for a 21 year old with PCOS who has done five failed medicated cycles? Absolutely. Jaja, should you have fibroids removed before trying IVF? No, if, especially if they're not inside the uterus. Can you get a hysteroscopy during a retrieval? Yes, you can. When do you ever recommend transferring more than one embryo? In a patient who's over 40 and who's failed transferring one, then that's a reasonable time for a person with low ovarian reserve. If we did IVF, how, how likely would we have twins because we want twins? Well, 
hopefully very low. We don't want twins. It's the goal is one healthy baby at a time. The American Society for Reproductive Medicine has designed that whole um, nomogram as to how many embryos you should have based on your age, etc. So we're looking for one. Um, yeah. You're welcome, Fadi. How often do you recommend having acupuncture? Well, there's the Cardenda Magarelli Acupuncture Protocol, CMAP Protocol, um, the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine, all of those docs are trained in that protocol. Peeling Arts Centers at the CNY programs all know the protocol. And it's nine treatments prior to the retrieval uh, if you're doing it together, and then it's three before the, the uh, pregnancy test. Or if you're doing it separate, it's uh, nine treatments before the retrieval and then eight treatments before the uh, frozen embryo transfer. Kerry Lynn, hi, Dr. Mags, just had acupuncture with Dr. Diane, transferred with Dr. Fink, said I didn't get to meet you. I'm sad I didn't get to meet. Today was hectic. I am so sorry. I would love to say hello to everybody, but it was hectic today. Well, you're in good hands with Dr. Diane and you're in good hands with Dr. Fink, I'm happy to say. Hola, Nisha. Welcome. Quiero hacer un cita con ustedes. Well, um, what I would recommend, Nisha, is just call up our CNY Fertility um, uh, 800 phone number and ask to speak with our Spanish-speaking folks. We have a whole team, and they should help you. Um, can you do an ERA, Emma? Wait, wait. Can you do the ERA, Emma? Forget what the other one is called during retrieval. Huh. No, you cannot do that. I think I got it. Um, I can't speak. <laughs> I um, Nisha, all of our prices are online. I don't. I'm. I'm not going to pretend to be fluent in Spanish. I know you're asking our prices for this, but all of our prices are online. Um, any tips to make transfer itself more fun and comfortable, aside from acupuncture before and after? Well, I don't think we want to make anything fun. Uh, that shouldn't be our goal. Let's make it effective uh, and and comfortable. Yes, as long as there's uh, you know we've got heating, air conditioning, nice lights, clean rooms. Uh, but we this is a small part of the big part of the journey. Thanks for the kisses. Um, is there a protocol that my local acupuncture could get that? Yes. Um, if you're looking for the protocol, contact eastwindsacupuncture.com, eastwindsacupuncture, Dr. Credenda, C-R-I-D-E-N-N-D-A. She invented the protocol. And so you can go to her website or contact her through her Facebook. And we have shared that protocol all over the world. We've published it. All of the publications are on our website, shows you the protocol. Yes, it is important to follow the protocol. And also, as I mentioned, um, yes, CNY does have Spanish-speaking uh, doctor. Yes, Dr. Verdi Alas, and she does lives. So um, Nisha, uh, Dr. Verdi Alas does a live in Spanish-speaking, and she's so you can ask for Dr. Verdi Alas. There you go. How long you take to get pregnant if you have PCOS? It has PCOS and time are not the same thing. Instead of HGH, can I take serial vital? It's not the same thing. Uh, but you can. Uh, if someone has a has, has a dialed fresh and a failed FET, what do you recommend before the next FET? ERA, yes. Emily, do the if you fail with a chromosomally normal embryo or once or with uh, two unsuccessful untested, I would definitely get an endometrial receptivity assay or an ER peak. Um, they help. Do I recommend transferring more than one embryo for a day three transfer with the previous failed transfer? Yes, I do. Um, all right. I'm in the New York metropolitan area. I have fibroids and they're lining of my uterus towards the outer side. My doctor said it shouldn't not cause a problem in conceiving. I've been trying for one and a half years. I'm 44. My numbers are good. Met a specialist that says I need surgery. I don't want to. I'm scared. I was told by another doctor my uterus is in shape of a heart. I want to have an account. Yeah. Yeah. Mikau e Mikau. Um, yeah. Surgery is not the direction for you. Uh, contact our office. Get a hold of 
and get on line there, especially if your fibroid is not inside the uterus, then you don't necessarily need to do surgery. Is uh, caffeine linked to infertility? I keep hearing so many. There's no conflict. Oh, Melissa. Alcohol, tobacco, street drugs, hot tubs for men, caffeine for women. You know, these are, are they have properties we like because they, they do things. And those properties are not productive towards reproduction. You're never going to have an experiment with, to see how much coffee can kill a fetus. That's not going to happen. So you're never going to get that. So you're never going to get a good study. But there are inferential studies that say don't do it. Like one cup of coffee, sure. That's about it. And that's, by the way, eight ounces or six ounces. So no one's going to be able to be definitively say um, yes or no, because no one's going to do the experiment on pregnant women. Is birth control prescribed prior to FET sometimes? Mikau, of course. My pleasure. Are day three embryos less likely to implant than day five? Yes, because to get to day five, the day three embryo has to go through, like I consider it a caterpillar to a butterfly. It has to molt. It has to become a blastocyst, which is the stage that implants. So without the... Um, Without that stage, you know, without, by transferring day three embryos, we don't know whether they'll make it or not. Whereas if we transfer day five embryos, we know they've made it to a blastocyst. So that's why they implant more likely because they're more mature and nature has already shown us which ones are more likely to stick. That's the logic behind it. Rosin, open third myomectomy is recommended to me. My biggest fibroid is 40, slightly entering. Oh, it's entering the cavity, Rosin. It, fix it. Yes. No, no, no. Fix. If it's entering the cavity, fix the fibroids. Straight eight. I got my fibroids removed from my uterus this past April. I'm 37 and want to transfer two embryos. Do you think that will be okay? No. I don't know what having your uterus surgerized is. That means it's weaker. You don't want to get twins or quadruplets because one, I put in and gotten three babies. Two, I've gotten lots of four babies and even greater number of babies by putting in two. In a uterus that's had surgery, you probably don't want to get more than one baby in there at a time. Okay, sip time. I don't know if my friend... Uh, Jeffrey is on. I don't know. He didn't. He said he was going to come on, but he didn't come on. You're welcome, straight eight, bad. Okay, Lindsay, more the better. Lindsay, yay. <laughs> Omas, that's good. We have Spanish uh, because my last IVF, all the tests were in Spanish. Oh yeah, yeah. That's no problem. If you're, if you're, yeah, we have plenty of people to translate. Tommy Fierce, uh, 33 and low AMH is priming advisable. Yes, when you have low AMH, there's a suggestion, which means poor, poor, lower ovarian reserve or poor ovarian reserve. So the goal would be to improve access to the cortex of the ovary because that's where the eggs are and that's what the priming does. All righty. Let's see, 18 and 30. All righty. Hovering around those 50 people asking questions. I love it. What else do you want to know about CNY? Let's see. Got a new nurse practitioner coming to Colorado Springs uh, uh, on uh, the 6th. I'm happy about that. Which countries do your clients come from? Any from Europe or Asia? Absolutely. Uh, actually, from all over the world. Um, Mikhail, I learned that meat is one of the culprits for growth because of hormones, but I hear now that keto is good for good for fertility. Can you shred some light on this? I don't know what to eat now. No, no, no. You want to have a low inflammatory diet. It's low carb, moderate. What's low carb? 50 grams of carbs a day. What, what are the carbs? Above the ground, green vegetables. That's it. And then good fatty meats. So you want, um, a low carb, moderate protein, high fat, it could be fish, it could be chicken, it could be beans, whatever, as long as you can keep your carbs low. What does LDN, low-dose naltrexone, do? It's an anti-inflammatory. Um, so we need to show up all the last tests. What? So we need to show up all the last tests before I'm going to start my, my first question in February. Yes, send in all of your previous testing. 
Um, um, yeah, do that. Please explain more about priming. I think I did. If you go back on this recording, I did spend some time talking about priming. How fast can we become a patient at CNY? Well, call today. We got, we have people on the phone standing by. Uh, and then it probably will take about, uh, I think our, we're booking now for March, if that's what you're asking. 33 low MH, is FET the best option or fresh? Fresh. Um, straight aid. I have my consultation this month and plan on coming in February. Is there anything I should be doing to get ready? Yes, read our family building guide acupuncture, avoiding alcohol, tobacco, street drugs. Um, do you recommend Nupogen being taken at baseline or four days prior to frozen embryo transfer? B. Noble Jack, I don't, I don't have any strong uh, recommendations for Nupogen. It's not something I typically use. Um, HCG wash intralipids. HCG wash, the purpose of that is to upregulate uh, the, um, the, the, um, uh, receptors, uh, intralipids, it's it's almost like a, a, a keto diet. It's just basically putting lipids, lowering inflammation. Um, that's kind of the thought. Okay, be noble, thanks. Um, I'm not, yeah. How many failed transfers until you get a successful one on average? Um, well, let me do it a different way. Three full IVF cycles. I love the kisses, be noble, thank you. Three full IVF cycles is what you should expect for getting pregnant if you're in your 20s with, with, without genetic testing. Two cycles with genetic testing in your 20s. In your 30s, of course, it'll go up by one or more. And in your 40s, it'll go up by two or more. So it takes quite a bit of, of uh, time to get success. What are your opinions on supplements helping with your low AMH? Uh, AMH is a reflection, Jessica, of your genetic makeup. It is not something supplemented. supplements will change. Uh, do HCG boosters show good results? You know, in our field, it's, it's uh, A, it's very difficult to test, and there is controversy. So um, Historically, HCG boosters were super helpful before we understood the role of progesterone. Now, I think they're less useful because we have really good progesterone. What would you take so body doesn't reject an embryo at transfer meds? Uh, well, uh, certainly acupuncture has been shown to reduce miscarriages uh, and improve pregnancies. Um, so that's something you can do. Uh, what can you take so your body doesn't reject an embryo at transfer meds? I don't think there's anything you can take to cause your body to not reject if that's what it's going to do. Um, Mrs. Angel Dip just had a third failed IUI. Should we go to IVF? Yes. Yes. So I'm perimenopausal, 51, and my daughter wants to give me eggs to carry. How long is the process? At least uh, three to five months. Oh, the IVF itself is 11 days, but it'll take you three to five months to get everything coordinated. Elena, I will be starting the process for IVF soon and I receive my medication list. It's about 15 or 16 medications. Is that standard? Yes. Just scared me seeing all these medicines that I have to take. Of course it did. It's crazy. But yes, that's normal. Just talk to your nurse. Does hysteroscopy need to be completed on a specific day of the cycle? Yes, hysteroscopy, I call that a pap smear with a telescope. Between day 7 to 11 is the best time. How many injections would I have to do when we get started? Well, there's probably 20 to 30 injections, uh, Rikiata. How do you decide which protocol is good for transferring out a 42-year-old? Well, your age will tell me a protocol. Your previous history will tell me a protocol. Yeah, lots of things will tell me what's the best protocol for you, okay? Um, hello, a different kind of wit. Jess and Mika joined. Hello. Foldamy007, okay. Jessica Sachs joined. Hello. Now, you guys who are joining now, I'm just about finished. So, again, it starts at 4 o'clock. So it's at four o'clock mountain time, right? Uh, every Tuesday. Mrs. Miss, I don't care. <laughs> okay. I'm 35 years old. I take metformin for PCOS and I have a metabolic syndrome and I would like to know, will that improve my IVF success rate? 
Metformin may absolutely help you as would a low-carb diet for you. Katie, I'm 28 and had two a day, three embryos left. I've had two failed transfers, done hysteroscopy. Excuse me. We are doing an HCG wash, zero vital, low carb eating, and starting acupuncture. Wow, fantastic. Do you recommend adding anything else? No, I'm assuming you're also doing your prenatal vitamins, etc. Do you ever recommend a day three transfer over a day five? Yes. In certain circumstances. Thanks for the kisses. Hi, Sabrina, Avix, Tajan, Michelle. Hello. All righty. Looking good, Dr. Mag. Well, thank you. I feel good. It's another one of those wonderful days. Thank you, Evix. Appreciate that. Uh, Tamal, how often do the HCG and SSG need to be performed? So it's a uterine evaluation, and you want to do that evaluation at least once per year, at least. Uh, I have two untested frozen embryos. I did two myomectomies in 42. How many do I transfer? Um, Untested embryos, I would do both. I would do both because it's greater than 80 or 90% chance that one of them is abnormal, okay? Is CNY considering a Texas office? Yes, not for a year or so, or probably more, more, more than a year or so. Um, is the success rate low for FET for someone with low AMH at, at 33? My doctor recommended FET. Um, I'm not sure why they recommended frozen embryo transfer. So I don't know why your doctor recommended it. Um, but your pregnancy chances are not based on whether they're frozen or fresh. It's based on the embryos themselves. I'm 42 with six blasts. Wow. Sent for PGT. Great. What are the chances of you playing? You should have one or two, uh, Katisa. Katie, do you recommend everyone testing their embryos? No, I do not. Recent data does not support that. In certain circumstances, certainly between 35 and 40, it seems to help. Otherwise, just keep transferring and make a baby. Save money. Does progesterone always rise after ovulation? Just purchased in, uh, in NITO and testing it daily, but not seeing a rise. After the LH surge, uh, well... Does progesterone always rise after ovulation? Yes. Um, and not seeing a rise. I don't, yeah, I, I don't know what INITO is to be honest. I-N-I-T-O. What is the best prenatal vitamin to take or is any prenatal good? Well, any prenatal is fine. Um, I did a little talk uh, on one of my talks on supplements and, you know, I think it was Walmart had an amazing uh, prenatal. Now, we make a prenatal, molecular fertility. Um, we make booster things, you know, but um, I want you to just have some is better than none. Anito is an ovulation test. Thank you. So, no, Anito, uh, okay. You said, does progesterone rise after ovulation? Just purchase not seeing it rise, meaning you're not, you did not ovulate. That's my point. Okay. Um, Ria, it's been a nice week, warm and clear. It sure has. It's been an amazing week here in Colorado. As a matter of fact, it's now nighttime. I always forget how really it gets dark here. Um, coming from Tessa, scared it'll be cold. Um, <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I, it, it can be cold and it should be cold actually. Um, but, uh, Let's see what's going on on my front door here. Oh, no, nothing in particular. Okay. Um, Victoria, I'm coming to January into Colorado, and I'm excited. Well, good. We're excited, too, <laughs> that you're coming. Where are you coming from, Victoria? Um, what is better for progesterone, pill insert or progesterone and oil? Progesterone and oil is the... Um, um, is the standard. Um, hey, B Noble, nice to see you. Thank you. And you have a happy holidays too. Um, do I recommend PGT for 33-year-old with low AMH? No, I do not. Is CNY considering a Washington, Seattle office? Nah, I don't think that's on the plans anytime soon that I know of. I know we're looking at Texas. I know we're looking at um, 
Minnesota. I know we're looking at um, California. Um, Washington, though, it probably is a good idea. Um, Eastern Oregon. <laughs> okay, so, okay. We're going back to Colorado in January. Good, Erica. It'll be good to see you. Um, gosh, I'm running out of time. I've got about five minutes left. Um, consultations booked for March, trying to stay hopeful, not great experience here in Texas. Okay. Uh, anyone who's got a, a, uh, an appointment way late, like March, April, please, please, please. I happened today, three patients. I called them up. They didn't answer. We'll fill up that spot with people who are on, who are willing to take a phone call. So just tell them you want to be on the waiting list. Um, the um, the other thing we want to do, I want to remind you, is for the month of December, you have to pre-plan your PGT. We are not going to do add-ons. Uh, we just can't. And in some places, we can't even do the PGTs themselves because of vacations uh, around the holidays. Um, do a clinic in Las Vegas. That's where my family lives and so many people who love you guys out there. Well, I love you guys too. Um, that's why we built the Colorado Spring ones because we have a direct flight to Arizona, which we have a direct flight to Las Vegas. We have direct flight to Texas, direct flight to um, to Minnesota. I think it's direct now. Uh, yeah, from Colorado. So um, let's see. Yeah, I'm doing, uh, I promise you guys that I do a talk on Zymot, which I'm going to hopefully do next week. Um, and so uh, next week we do a lecture. The lecture starts uh, promptly at 4 o'clock. Um, you have to be on YouTube or Facebook, uh, not Instagram. We can't do lectures on Instagram. We could do the lecture, but you can't see the slides. So uh, we do start at 4 o'clock promptly. Um, um, so that's good. Uh, oh, good about Ashley, Lindsay. That's fantastic. Um, so next week we'll do probably a talk on Zymot. Um, and, uh, yeah, and make sure you mostly focus in on the, uh, uh, Facebook live and the YouTube live because this program that we use, which is called StreamYard, allows us to stream in multiple directions at once. Instagram doesn't allow us to do that. So uh, that's why we have to do that. Um, Melanie, thank you so much for the positive spirit. Um, yes, we, we do want you all to be, to have a happy, happy, healthy holiday. You know, we're going to be working. We're going to be here. I think we have a couple of days off, but pretty much we're going to be working through the holidays. And um any tips for people to get who are pregnant? Yes, continue with your um, uh, all your prenatal vitamins, etc. Do you guys hire medical assistants? Oh my God, yes, we do. Um, we hire medical assistants. We need laboratory techs. Um, we're expanding. We need nurses. We need LPNs. We need nurse practitioners. We need doctors. Um, we're just growing. So yes, if people want to be hired. Please call. Well, anyway, I want to thank everybody for another wonderful Tuesday. <laughs> and uh, Sarah, thank you so much. Uh, you guys, I enjoy speaking with you. And thank you for listening to me. And uh, anytime you want to suggest something on any of these talks, I'd be happy to do it. I know I'm still promised the one on inflammation and our immune protocols. I definitely am going to do that. Uh, the Pergamune test, I just heard about it. Um, thank you, Lindsay. Um, and, uh, okay, everybody time to send me all the kisses. Remember, push the button and all those kissy buttons and <laughs> you guys have a uh, great and safe week. This is a wonderful time to love each other up. Oh, there's a kiss. That was a, that was a beautiful kiss. Thank you. Um, and, um, anytime ask us questions. Uh, we, we have all week long, we have people talking. So, um, uh, on our lives. So please do that. And I'm going to be doing some interviews. I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Fink. I'm going to be bringing Dr. Fink online. I'm going to bring Dr. Credenda, Dr. King, an acupuncturist here, Dr. Walensky, our surgeon. I may bring on, actually, I'm probably going to bring on one of my, um, my top, my, my, my senior embryologist, Tammy, um, 
I'll even bring on, I probably will do an interview with my uh, office manager because she's amazing, Adrian. Anyway, I want to thank the CMY family. Thank you all. Be safe. And I definitely look forward uh, to seeing you guys in the future. And uh, be well. Take care. Bye, everybody.